Hey guys, it's me, Apurbo, back again with another video. In this video, we're gonna learn the basics of AI in Unity and create simple AI behaviors that can be used in a lot of games. So let's jump right into the video. We are going to learn to create the most basic yet versatile AIs in this video. This video is going to be divided into three parts. The first part or the first AI that we are going to create is an enemy that follows the player. The second part or the second AI that we are going to create is an enemy that shoots the player and retreats if the player gets too close. And the third AI that we are going to create is the most versatile and used AI that is a patrol AI. So let's get right into the video. What I I have here is a pretty basic unity scene. We have a materials folder that contains three materials, enemy, ground and player. We're gonna need this later in the video. Then we have some other folders not related to the video. But the one thing that I want to focus is the projectile prefab. It's just a cube with a scale of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. That's it. Now let's create a plane and call it ground and also give it the ground material. Now let's create a cube and call it player and give it the player material. Similarly, let's create an enemy. Now let's start creating the AIs. So the first AI that we are gonna create is a pretty simple yet used in a lot of games is an enemy that follows the player. This is a pretty easy to create so let's just get started. So first let's create a script and call it follow player and open it in visual studio. So what we need to do here is move our position to wherever our player is. So let's type transform dot position is equal to vector 3 dot move towards and open and close parentheses. This is a vector 3 function that's gonna move towards a target. So let's type transform dot position. Now we're gonna need a target. Let's go up here and type public transform target. Now put target dot position now we're gonna need a speed variable so again go up here and type public float speed now put it in here and multiply that with time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent this might be confusing for you at first but just type after me now if we save the script and go back to unity it looks like I have made a spelling mistake here so let's just correct that and save our script and go back to unity attach our follow player script to the enemy and let's give it a speed value of 1 and also give it our player as the target. So now if we play the game as you can see the script works. The enemy moves towards our player but as you can see here we have a major problem here that is the enemy stops at the exact position of our player that means inside our player but we don't want our enemy to stop inside our player. We want our enemy to stop at a certain distance from our player. So right now let's code that in. So the easiest way we can do that is by checking if our enemy is a certain distance away from our player or our target. Now let's create a public float called minimum distance and before that let's give it a if statement and in the condition let's type vector3.distance. So we are gonna check the distance between our transform and our target's position. So let's type transform.position, target.position and we are gonna check if it's greater than our minimum distance. Now if I save the script and go back to unity and play the game and make sure to give our minimum distance a value. In our case I'm gonna give it a value of 1 and if I play the game as you can see the enemy follows our player but it stops at a certain distance. Just a quick thing if you're enjoying this video make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this in the future. Let's get back to the video. Great, now let's move to our second part of the video that is creating a enemy that's going to shoot at our player and if the player gets too close it's going to retreat. So let's divide this AI into two parts. First let's create the retreat part then we're gonna create the shooting part. So for that I'm gonna use my previous script that is follow player and open that script because they're gonna have a lot of similarities. So the first thing that I'm going to change is instead of greater 
greater than i'm going to put smaller than so it's gonna check if our player is in the area of our minimum distance if that is true then we are gonna retreat so the easiest way we can do that is by putting a minus in front of our speed variable that's it that's going to create our retreat part now make sure to give the minimum distance a larger value for this one because we don't want our player to get so close to our enemy before it retreats but if we give it a value of say 2 as you can see it works just fine now let's create the shooting mechanic for that let's open our script again so in order to shoot the first thing that we are going to need is our bullet prefab or a projectile prefab so up here let's type public game object projectile and in the update method let's instantiate this prefab so let's type instantiate projectile and then where we want to instantiate it so at our position so transform dot position at end with what kind of rotation so quaternion dot identity that basically means we don't want any kind of rotation applied to it now let's save the script and go back to unity and if we give our projectile prefab in the correct slot and now if we play the game as you can see it instantly instantiates a lot of projectile in our scene but we don't want that what we want is a constant fire rate let's say every two seconds the enemy is going to shoot our player so now let's implement this idea in into coding for that what we are going to need is a variable that is going to tell us that it's time to shoot so let's create a private float called next short time and put our instantiate into an if statement and under the condition let's type time dot time so the current time in our game is greater than next time to short only then we are going to instantiate our projectile now we also need to reset our next time to short so after instantiating let's type next short time is equal to time dot time so the current time in our game now we need to add some value or the value that is going to act as how many seconds after we're going to shoot so up here now let's create a public float called time between shots and put that in here now if we save the script and go back to unity and give our time between shots a value say one now if we play the game as you can see after some times it spawns a projectile but currently the projectile isn't doing anything it's just spawning there and sitting there now let's give our projectile some features say move towards our player now let's create a new script called projectile and open it in visual studio so the first thing that we are going to need here is a target so up here let's type private vector 3 target pause that basically means targets position in the start method let's type target pause is equal to game object dot and make sure you put a capital letter where i'm putting one now the way we are going to determine what is our player is by checking if it is stacked with the player tag so if we go back to unity and select our player you can see that there is an option called tag and currently it is untagged but if we select that you can see there are a lot of tags already predefined here but the one that we need is our player tag so i'm going to tag our player with that player tag and if we go back to unity and type find game object with tag this is a function in unity make sure you type exactly the way i'm typing it and open and close parenthesis and in parenthesis in quarter mark type player this is going to search for our player and dot transform dot position because remember we put vector 3 there so we need a position now we are going to use the same technique that we used before to move towards our target in the update function let's type transform dot position is equal to vector 3 dot move towards open and close parenthesis and in parenthesis transform dot position comma target pause and make sure you don't type target pause dot position because you are already storing the targets position in the target post variable now we are gonna need a speed variable so let's go up here and type public float speed and type speed here and also multiply that with time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent now if we save our script and go back to unity and apply the projectile script to our projectile and make sure to give the speed variable a value and now if we play the game 
as you can see it follows the player and stops currently we don't want that we are gonna destroy it when it reaches the player you can do a lot of things here but this is a tutorial so i'm just going to keep it short so let's open our script and under here let's type if transform dot position is equal to target post so if our transform or our projectile has reached our player's position then we are gonna destroy it so let's type destroy game object and that's it there you go now we have the second ai ready now let's move to our last part of our video that is creating the petrol ai so let's create a new script called enemy petrol and open it in visual studio so the way we are going to move our enemy is going to be same as we did before but instead of moving it to our player's position we are gonna move it to some waypoints in our world so let's type transform dot position is equal to vector 3 dot move towards and in parentheses let's type transform dot position and right now we need a array of transform so up here let's go and create public transform open and close square bracket that's going to make our transform an array and we want to call it petrol points now let's type petrol points dot position and we're gonna need a speed so let's create a public float speed and put the speed in here and let's also multiply that with time dot delta time now if we save the script and go back to unity as you can see there we have an error in our code that is because the transform is an array but what we put here is just a transform we didn't specify what index from our array we are going to use in our petrol point dot position so let's open and close square brackets and now we can specify that from our transform array which item we want so we can put 0 1 2 or whatever the index we want but in our case we don't know the index number beforehand it's going to be changing as our game runs because we want our enemy to patrol between certain points or certain locations so it's going to change as the game runs so let's create a private integer called current index and let's put it in here now if we save the script and go back to unit as you can see there is no error in our console now let's apply the enemy petrol script to our enemy and quickly create some waypoints the waypoints are basically empty objects that are placed throughout our scene we can give it an icon from here now let's select all of our petrol point and drag and drop it in our enemy petrol script as you can see if we run the game it only moves to the first waypoint and it stops because currently it defaults to the element zero in our transform array it's not changing or updating as we go i'm just going to select all my waypoints and make sure the y value is one because the way our waypoints is currently working because we don't have any gravity to our enemy the enemy's center point is moving towards our waypoint center point so the enemy is floating but you can adjust it really quickly so in our script the first thing that we are going to do is make sure that our enemy only moves if it hasn't reached our waypoint so i'm just going to put this in a if statement and under the condition i'm going to type transform dot position is not equal to petrol points open and close square bracket and in square brackets type current index dot position so it means if our enemy hasn't reached our current indexed waypoint then it's going to move towards our waypoints and then i'm going to type else so if it has reached our waypoint then it's going to move our move to our next waypoint so what i want to do here is when i reach a waypoint i want to wait sometimes and then move to the next waypoint so for that what i'm going to use is a coroutine a coroutine is basically a, a way to stop your code from running not by breaking it or stopping it the coroutine helps to stop your code 
but still keeps it running i know it can be hard to understand at first but just follow me so in here i'm going to type i enumerator wait open and close parentheses and in curly brackets i'm going to type yield return new wait for seconds and make sure you type it exactly i'm typing it right here and in here i can put whatever seconds i want to wait before moving to our next waypoint so i'm just going to create a variable for that so i'm going to call it public float wait time and put wait time in here what i can do here is type current index plus plus it's going to set the waypoint to our next waypoint under else i can just type wait and open close parenthesis but this is not the right way to call a coroutine to call a coroutine what we need to do is type start coroutine and in parenthesis type the name of the function in my case it's wait with the parentheses now if i save the script and go back to unity as you can see my enemy is following every waypoint but if i let it run for a little bit as you can see that once it has traveled all five waypoints there is an error message because there is no way of resetting our waypoint if we take a look at our code if we reached our waypoint then we are going to move to our next waypoint in the else method but if we take a uh, look at our wait function you can see the here we are just increasing our current index but when it reaches the fourth index meaning the fifth element in our array when it tries to add one to that it can't because there is no fifth element in our array so it returns an error so we need to check if our array has the next element then we are going to increase our current index so let's do that right now so let's put this into a if statement and under the condition let's type current index plus one is less than petrol points dot length then we are going to increase our current index and let's type else so we are going to reset our current index so let's type current index is equal to zero so we are resetting our current index now if i save the script and go back to unity as you can see here the enemy moves through all the waypoints and when it reaches our last waypoint it defaults back to the first waypoint but if you notice currently it's not following the array list that we gave it we want to move to our petrol point then we want to move to our petrol point one then two then three and so on and so forth but currently it's not doing that because if we take a look at our code we are moving towards our waypoints in the update method and the update method runs a couple of times a second so it messes up with the calculation so let's just fix that right now the easiest way to fix that is to check if our coroutine has been called so i'm just going to create a private bool called is called and in the else function i'm just going to type if is called is equal to false then we want to start our coroutine and make sure to make is called true when we call our coroutine and in the last section of our coroutine let's make sure that is called is equal to false so that we can call our coroutine again now if we save the script and go back to unity as you can see that our script or our enemy is following the path that we selected for it that's great now you can take the knowledge that you gained from this video and make your own ais for your game there we go now you have some working ai behaviors in your game make sure to have fun with them while you are making them and i will see you in the next video goodbye